Hello everyone and welcome to my opening series on opening traps and in today's episode which is episode 4 we will be looking at the vicious Stafford Gambit trap. So it comes after pawn to e4 by white, we reply with pawn to e5 and white goes knight to f3 here. They attack our pawn and instead of defending it with something like knight to c6, here we play knight to f6, the Russian game counterattacking white's e pawn which is a very reputable defense. Now white will capture here and what is a much more dubious version of this is to go knight to c6. This is the Stafford Gambit, and what we're doing here is that we're offering a trade of knights, and if white wants to keep their one pawn advantage, then they will trade knights here. We capture back for our d-pawn, and even though we are down a pawn in this position, our pieces have all of these open lines, and we're going to get a lot of counterplay in return, even though the computer completely hates this opening. So... Here, because we're attacking white's pawn, they're going to defend it with pawn to d3. This is by far the most common move. Now we go bishop to c5 here. This is a very typical move in Stafford Gambit positions to target the f2 pawn and uh, square, which is very vital for white to protect, and white can blunder it right away with bishop to g5. Now, on the surface, this looks like a good move. They're pinning our knight to our queen. However, here we win with a absolutely ridiculous sacrifice. Knight takes on e4, and you have a completely winning position. So, there are four main lines that white can play here. I will look at every single one of them to really give you the full treatment here. And the first one I will look at, which is the position on the thumbnail, is if they capture our queen. Now, they cannot capture our queen. We actually have checkmate in two in this position by playing bishop takes on f2 check. We check their king, and because our knight both defends it and defends this square, their king has to run up to e2, and now our other bishop comes into play, bishop to g4, and this is actually checkmate, and this is an extremely rare case where three minor pieces work in beautiful harmony to checkmate the white king on just the eighth move extremely early. So, they really cannot capture our queen because of that, but what if instead they try to capture our knight like this? Now, for the record, we can just capture the bishop here and have a slightly better position. However, we actually can win white's queen here with bishop takes on f2. A sacrifice, but kind of a pseudo-sacrifice, because if they capture, then they instantly lose their queen here. We can just go ahead and capture it. There's nothing defending it now. So their best try here is probably to run up to e2, try and keep the queen defended one last time, but now simply bishop to g4 here. We skewer the king and the queen. Now they have to capture, and we can go ahead and just capture white's queen here. Important note, do not capture the bishop, because don't forget your own queen is still under attack you have to capture off your queen and now you just have a completely winning position here where white's king is in shambles and you are up a lot of material so they can neither capture your queen or your knight but now let's look at one of their two best defenses according to the engine and the first one is bishop back to e3 here now what white is doing with this move is they are first of all getting their uh, bishop out of the way of our queen but they're also defending the f2 pawn by uh, blocking it out from our bishop seeing it but here we still have a completely winning position by trading bishops they have to capture back. Uh, if they capture this, then once again, we get bishop takes on f2 here. So they have to capture. And now we take advantage of this weak diagonal and play queen to h4 check here. And we're completely winning in this position. So they only have two legal moves, which are pawn to g3 and king up to e2. And they probably are not going to play king up to e2 because then queen to f2 check. Defended by the knight, and this is actually just checkmate here. So they have to play pawn up to g3 but now we win with knight takes on g3 here the only winning move taking advantage of this pin uh, if they capture then now we simply capture the rook here and if they try something else like rook to g1 then now we once again win knight to e4 discovered check off uh, king up to e2 then once again queen to f2 check mate so they have to block the rook 
we capture, and once again, we're up a ton of material with a completely winning position. Now let's look at their last line, which is probably the hardest to uh, play against if you don't know exactly what you are doing, and that is in this position, queen to e2 here. Now, what they're doing is they are counterpinning our knight as well as attacking it, and the way to win here is... um. Bishop takes on f2 is still completely winning, but what looks actually more winning is to capture the bishop right away. What you're doing here is you're sacrificing this knight so white captures, and you might think, oh well, this is an even material position, we don't have anything here, but we win with king over to d8. The idea being is we're going to bring our rook and we're going to pin their queen to their king and they're just completely losing here. So if they try like knight to d2, then rook to e8, uh, they have to sacrifice, we capture back and now we just are up a ton of material and even though our king is a little unsafe, white has absolutely nothing to actually attack us. Uh, if they try bishop to e2 here, which looks like a very good move, uh, just blocking this pin, we actually take advantage of another idea in this position, which is queen to c1 check. I bet you did not see that move. Checking white's king, now they have to block the bishop, and now we once again get rook to e8 here. Uh, they have to capture, we capture back, once again completely winning position. And what is their uh, probably best try here? is pawn to f4 now our queen no longer can go to c1 in any of these positions and if they play rook to e8 or sorry if we play rook to e8 then they would just sacrifice and then capture our queen so because of that we're actually still winning here with queen to f6 and we take advantage of this pawn being weak and after bishop to e2 we can go ahead and simply just capture the rook in the corner is completely trapped and once again we get a completely winning position all right thank you so much for watching uh like subscribe do that stuff stay tuned for the next episode in this series and i will see you next time have a fantastic day